In this video I'm going to show you how to build this the stand that I just built for my sander, this one, and one that's going to be coming soon. Um, and it's 32 inches long and it's composed of these these great looking box joints right here for these two squares and these um, pieces that are, I guess I would call that a half lap um, all the way down with the, um, a notch for a 2x4 to connect them and I just wad it in with 1 8 inch plywood and so now let's get on to the video the 2x4s in this project mostly just come from the 70% um, off bin at the local Home Depot um, it's a good thing that they do because some Home Depots you go and they'll have really really warped stock in their um, regular inventory and um, and what I'll do is I'll just buy the warped ones and then stack them on top of the shelf with some heavy stuff on top and they'll be unwarped due to the humidity in our garage after a while um, I'm going to uh, square them up by running them to the joiner and the planer obviously this is the planer because I need it to be nice square stock whenever I start making the square box joints um, because I don't want the, um, the box joints to be staggered and I'm just taking off a 32nd of an inch on the joiner and now once I joint one edge I can run it against the fence to square up the other with the table saw blade now I'm going to give you all a blade changing tip and um, oftentimes you, you'll put your two wrenches on and you'll you'll try to jack one of them to your table and hit the other one which sometimes can work but you'll notice that you're kind of bending everything and you may not like that I know I don't and um, so what I like to do is I'll take the two wrenches put them in there and then take a piece of metal such as your um, your miter sled or whatever uh, I'll take a piece of metal and put it in there and then turn it like that and then they'll just release. And that usually works for me. If it doesn't have to be your miter slot, it could be a, anything else. Now I'm putting some paste wax on the um, on the s slots of the the runners of my box joint jig. And this blade is not a flat a flat grind blade, but it's close enough. It's just the one that came with our saw stop. And um, you know, box joining these two by fours gets kind of sketchy. But obviously, I had to cut sixteen of them to make this project, so I got pretty used to it. And I'm only going to show you how to make one square because, you know, you kind of get the idea after seeing me box showing it eight times. It's, it's pr this project is pretty symmetrical, so um, some of the steps I just show you one of and I'm assuming that you'll get the other. Um, yeah, gluing these up can be tricky since they're so deep. Once you get them started, you kind of want to lead in with the angle of one box joint into the other. And, um, and of course, you know, but just put extra glue because that can always be sanded off. Um, don't be afraid to just wail on these with the mallet and um, yeah. I also labeled the joints so I knew which ones would fit together the best. And after after I get them together, I'm just gonna hit it on the ground, and you have to check the insides to make sure they're square because even though. Um, you think they're seated properly, they can still be a little bit off. And now I'm just going to use this belt sander to, um, to get all the excess glue, which I have plenty of on there, and flatten out the ends. you got to be careful with that belt sander, though, because if you use it too much, you can actually uh, change the shape of the piece. And now I'm just going to pin it with some deck mates, all the box joints. And um, now I'm going to make these slats that run across that hold the two squares together. And you just saw me make one square, but I have two of them made. Um, I'm just going to make that half lap type joint, I guess. I guess you call it half of a half lap um, on the table saw like that. And you, what you can do is you can do your blade like every once in a while. And then just hit, use a hammer to hit out the chunks between. Um, yeah, it seems sketchier than it actually is. Uh, you know, this is pretty self-explanatory. Just gluing these on the edges, making sure they're square, and running some deck mates on. Now I'm cutting the um, the notches for the um, for those runners that you saw for the two by fours to go in. It's also still pretty self-explanatory. Um, now I'm screwing those in for good. Uh, I'm using a half inch countersink. It's too big of a countersink to use with these deck mates, which I believe are two inch deck mates. Um, but you know, it works. And I can just line up the bottom pieces, the bottom runners, with these uh, two by fours that I installed in the middle. Of course, these two by fours are not screwed in yet because I didn't want that to determine um, where the pieces actually were. It's just kind of to help me line it up. 
and now I'm going to actually glue them in. And again, I'm still going to use that half inch countersink and use the clamp to pull it tight. Now for the other side. Um, these are just some three inch polyurethane casters. Of course, if you measure from where they install to the bottom of the wheel, they are four inches. And I counted that into my plan. Um, just two locking swivel ones and then two just straight ones. Um, they're Harbor Freight. I think they were like three or four dollars a piece. Um, this piece of plywood is, you know, three quarter inch piece of plywood. And they just, if it's right between the two by fours. I believe the piece of plywood is 13 inches wide. And again, the half inch countersink. Now I'm going to rip some of this 1 8 inch down and I'm going to put it, I'm going to wall in the sides. This is because later I want to install some drawers in the middle and I don't want them to get a bunch of dust inside. So I'm just going to notch out places for the 2x4s with the um, jigsaw and brad nail it down. And of course I just did the other side off camera because once you get one side, you, you know, you understand how to do the other. And it's basically just going to replace the sander that I have now, the sander stand with another one on its way. And now I have plenty of room in here to have drawers, sort of like Matthias Wandel's design where most of it's open so that I can later install drawer runners. And, you know, I, I've sanded everything flush and um, everything's pretty, pretty flush with each other. And I think some drawers in this thing will not be hard to install later down the road.